Toilet Tank Fill Valve Replacement. Here's a video on how I do it. Maybe it will help you. This video also shows how I made minor modifications to my 6 liter low flush toilet to get this to work. If you find your toilet water running continuously down the fill tube like this, and adjusting the float doesn't help, or your toilet stops flushing because your float valve is stuck leaving you with an empty reservoir tank, then it's probably time for a new valve. Before we go any further, all the water we're dealing with is clean tank water. It's usually the same water that comes from your taps. A lot of people don't know this. The dirty bacteria laden toilet bowl water is downstream from the flapper valve. If you're doing a task like this, I would suggest you find out the location and be able to gain access to the main water shutoff valve for your place, just in case something unexpected happens. You shouldn't need to use it, but it's better to be safe than sorry, right? The valve in this video, I bought at a large home improvement store. I'm not promoting this valve, rather, it's just the first one I found on the shelf. You might prefer something different. For tools, we'll use a set of adjustable pliers, a sponge, a measuring tape, and possibly an adjustable wrench if you want to replace the water supply tube, or stop a supply valve from leaking. I'll hit on that one later in the video. You'll need a marker, a pencil, scissors, flathead screwdriver, and an old rinsed out windshield washer fluid container or an equivalent old container as well. First, we'll make a quick container for catching water. Measure the height of your toilet tank supply valve from the floor. Next, grab the container and draw a line with the marker the same height up from the bottom. And then cut out the bottom of the container with those scissors. There. Now slide the container under the water shutoff valve and turn the water off by turning the valve clockwise until it stops turning. It's very important that the water is turned off completely or you will have a flood. If you have a ball valve like on my other toilet, you'll just need to turn the valve one quarter of a turn clockwise. When the water is off, you can then flush the toilet. Hold the flush lever down to let as much water out of the tank as possible. You won't be able to get all the water out, so next we'll sponge more out into our container. Empty the container out into the toilet bowl. Next, with the container back under the toilet valve area, turn the hose end fitting at the top near the tank when viewed from underneath counterclockwise to unthread it. Depending on what style connection you have, you may need to use the adjustable wrench or pliers for this step. Let the small amount of water drip and empty into your container. If you have a steel line, you can unthread the bottom fitting and put it aside. You can then replace it with a flexible braided tube instead which will give you much more flexibility for movement. This is optional. They are cheap and come in many sizes. Just be sure that whatever length of tube you are purchasing is long enough to avoid being pulled or kinked afterward from being the wrong size. These tubes can also safely make a long turn like this if required. Now empty the water container again. You'll need an empty container for the next step. Go up to the top and disconnect your old water refill tube. Now you're ready to remove the valve. Using an adjustable wrench or large pliers, turn the existing valve retaining nut the same way, counterclockwise, while at the same time supporting the very top of the valve with your other hand. Hold the valve completely still as we're about to release more water. Grab your water container again and place it under the float valve threads and slowly lift the valve out. Water will come out of the hole in the tank, so do your best to catch it with your container. In most cases, you'll need to sponge the drips off the floor. Place the container under the dripping hole and let the tank empty completely and keep sponging if needed. Let's take a quick look at this fill valve. Here we have the adjustable bowl refill valve, which we must set up properly when we're done. We have a large in-tank positive locking height adjuster for the valve assembly. Then we have the float valve, which includes the fine-tuning thumb screw adjuster. We have the fill tank filling tube, which provides all the water for filling the tank. And at the bottom, we have a plastic threaded nut and a rubberized tapered washer. The washer will stay on the stem and slide into the hole with the valve assembly from the top of the tank, while the plastic nut will thread on from underneath to hold the valve assembly in place when it has been tightened up. Now looking into this hole, you can see where my modifications need to be made. First, the foam will need to be trimmed to accommodate the main water discharge port and tube. Second, 
The hole in the foam insulation in this tank is for some reason positioned off to one side in relation to where the valve is to be bolted in. With the new valve having a thicker base compared to the old valve I had previously, my tapered rubber washer would not sit centered in the hole inside the tank which would definitely result in a water leak. This appears to be a problem with the manufacturing process of this toilet. If you run into this, the following steps worked for me. For the discharge port, I simply marked off the area needed to accommodate the tube with a marker. Then I carefully broke apart the foam with my fingertips like this to accommodate the port and tube. And for the off-center hole problem, I took a flathead screwdriver and quite easily, carefully with the tip, sliced away the foam and putty that held the foam to form a round accommodating hole for the valve. Now, if you have this J-style tube, cut the length of the tube with scissors so it will fit your tank. And then push it onto the water outlet port and carefully drop the valve into place, making sure the area near the hole has no debris or dirt in it. Hold the top of the valve with one hand and with the other, turn the nut in a clockwise direction until the nut is tight. In this case, one to three clicks indicates sufficient torque. Refer to the installation guide provided with your valve for details. Next, you can use the positive locking adjuster to set the top of the valve to near the top of the tank. Then trim the bowl refill tube to a comfortable length, not too short, and place the tube fully onto the refill tube port on one end. Then clip the other end onto the top lip of the bowl fill pipe. Be sure to never let this tube be positioned down this pipe as you may cause a siphon effect to occur which will constantly empty your tank of water. Once this is done, you can reconnect your supply tube fitting. Turn the fitting clockwise and then tighten the fitting snug but not too tight. These are plastic threads so be careful. Once everything is connected, perform a visual inspection of what you just did to be safe. There are three important steps that must be done next. One, first turn the water back on and allow the bowl to fill to check for leaks. If all is well, then step two is to set the fill level of the tank. You can do this by turning the float level thumb wheel adjuster. Turning the screw counterclockwise will cause the float to meet the water earlier when the water is rising, causing the water to turn off sooner, thereby making the water level lower. If instead the thumb screw is turned clockwise, the water will be higher up the tank. If it is turned clockwise too much, the water will overfill the tank and water will spill down the bowl refill tube, causing the water to run continuously. The best place to have the water level is between 3 8 of an inch to 1 half of an inch from the top of the bowl refill tube. If by chance you are unable to reach the right level, then the valve will need to be moved up or down using the in-tank height adjuster I showed you earlier. Now once your tank level has been set properly, you must then set your bowl fill level to the right height. This is where a busy toilet with the wrong setting can waste potentially thousands of gallons or liters of water over time if this next step is not done right. Grab a container of clean water and slowly pour it into the toilet bowl until the water level does not go up any higher. Let the water sit for two minutes. Now use a pencil and gently mark the bowl one eighth of an inch below the high water line in the bowl like this. Now remember the mini valve up top? Turn the valve slightly counterclockwise like this and flush the toilet. Watch the water level rise in the bowl. It should be lower than the line you drew after the toilet has finished flushing. If it is, turn the valve slightly clockwise and flush again. Watch the fill level again. Adjust the mini valve slightly clockwise between flushes to get the water level to, but not over the line you drew. Once that's done, you are done. Oh, by the way, here's a tip. I guess you could call this a drip tip. If you're having a problem with a water shutoff valve on your toilet leaking water at the stem onto the floor, the leak can almost always be stopped by turning this nut ever so slightly clockwise. This will usually compress the seal at the stem valve, stopping the water from leaking past the stem. This method will also stop leaks at the main shutoff valve too, so there's no need to call the plumber if you have a drip on the floor. Thanks for watching and happy flushing.